Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Hometown Heroes, I'm Mike Kenichi. In 2003, the Derby Boys basketball team had an unbelievable season, finishing with a 12-8 record and two wins in the Class S tournament. What people forget is, Derby had gone on a 21-year streak without making the tournament. Who could forget that 1982 team, Derby's last tournament team? Well, we have two men today that are going to talk about it, two guys that were a key part of that team, two of the tri-captains of that team, and they are Greg Spock and Ken Chidoba. And guys, I want to thank you for coming on today. It's a real pleasure. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. So let me ask you this, Ken. I'll start with you. Sure. When did the love for basketball first develop for you? God, I was really young, probably about four or five years old. Wow. I started playing in the backyard. Uh, I played my father for a long period of time until I beat him, and he never played with me again. But, you know, grew up in the derby system. So right. I played playing bitty basketball. Joe Moore was a great coach. I just loved it. Right, and if I'm not mistaken, your father was an Ansonia graduate, correct? Yes, he played right. basketball. He was actually sorry. a good football player for Ansonia, correct? Very good athlete, and my uncle Ziggy was probably one of the best right. as far as receivers. So let me ask you, um, did it take your father a while to get that love for Derby, or does he oh, still, um, is it still hard for him? You know, Valley Sports, um, he, he loves Ansonia, but uh, he knows where his heart is as far as families in Derby. Right. So. Now, Greg, your father went to Derby High School. He's a very good baseball player for Derby. I believe he played for uh, Anthony D. Francisco around like 56, 57. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you kind of had a good idea about Derby when you were a kid. But, I mean, did your father stress about going to Derby at all when you were younger? No, it was, it was since we were living in Oxford, it was kind of a last-minute decision when I was in eighth grade. Right. You know, Seymour was the high school, and um, we just decided that uh, I was going to go to Derby probably maybe with a few months left in my eighth grade. Right, uh, and yeah, we might have touched on this when I had you on the podcast, but when did your love for basketball begin? Y you, know, I, you know, I grew up in Ansonia, and it was mostly a lot of football and baseball in the streets, to right. be honest with you. Basketball wasn't one of the things that... Uh, I necessarily grew up playing, but uh, probably started playing more when I got like to fifth grade or so. Right. And um, and then I, I played every year since since then, and through the bitty basketball system and and all that stuff. It was a uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it's a great sport. Right. And Ken, if I'm not mistaken, you'd mentioned you played bitty league, so you must have started playing bitty what maybe seven years old when they had instructional league and stuff. Very much so. Right. Now, who were some of your coaches back then when you You know, didn't? Joe Moore was a big influence back then. Uh, he, kn he knew the game, and we used to have practices in his backyard. So we took it to the next level as far as extreme, as far as playing, uh, playing within his backyard, setting up plays. And, right. And, and good friends of my team uh, was Ronnie Bartone and, and Glenn Grotadoria, who were you know, uh, key parts of our team for the right. who were awesome. basketball team. Exactly. So let me ask you, um, you know, you mentioned your father was a great athlete. I mean, did he have a sport he loved more than the other? I mean, what was his passion? I know he loved football. I, I would say football. Football. So yeah. basketball he liked, but not as much as football. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you have any desire to play football when you were a kid, or was it just basketball always? I ate, slept, slept and drank basketball. That was my passion. I loved it. Uh, I thought I was too thin. Right. Uh, so I just really concentrated on basketball. Now, were you tall as a kid, or did it take years later? You know, to... my eighth grade year, uh, from the freshman year, I grew six inches. Oh, wow. So that was big. Didn't put much weight on, but <laughs> I grew. Right. So. Now, were there any uh, players that you emulated when you were a kid? Like, say, you're eight years old. Was there any player on TV you saw? I mean, were I you love, an NBA fan? Or? I love college basketball. College basketball right. is the best. March Madness is fantastic, but I love Chris Mullen. Chris Mullen, He's a great player, right. lefty shooter from St. John's. Right. He was one of my favorites. Exactly. And Greg, obviously, I mean, you were a three-sport player at Derby, but um, as years went on, would you say basketball was probably the sport you loved the most? Or? You know, that's, that's a tough question, Mike. I mean, I liked football a lot, too. Right. Um, to be honest with you, I really can't say. I had a great time playing both of them. Right. I, you know, I, I would say football and basketball over baseball, but... You know, between those two sports, I really can't give you an answer, to be quite honest with you. Right. Now, were there any uh, people you em emulated as a kid that you really enjoyed watching? 
No, there's really nobody that I could uh, remember in particular. I, I right. preferred the NBA game a little bit more growing up uh, as opposed to college basketball. I think back then the NBA was a lot better now. Yeah. It's very unwatchable yes. to me. Yeah. I agree. I think college basketball is a lot better than the NBA now. Right. Now, would your parents, t- would your dad take you to any games when you were a kid? Like either one of you? Like, would you go see Derby play at all we as a kid? We went everywhere as far as from men's league's, men's league's games to high school games to the Nets were playing in New Haven. Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, uh, everywhere and anywhere we went to. Right, and now would your father take you anywhere as a kid? Like not, no, not to, not to basketball games. Just football. Uh, yeah, yeah. It right. was, basketball wasn't really a right. stress too much. I think as you guys were growing up as kids, I think Flip Orzetti was Derby's coach at the time. And they had some real talent. They had Ken Pereira's. Yeah. They had um, Eddie McManus. They had Max, who was real good. Um, they had a talent yeah. of players, you know, Vinnie Greco, Brent Sanford. I mean, did you guys ever get to see any of these guys play? Uh, Vitello. Uh, who was our AD back then? Mr. Vitello? Yeah. Yes. His, his yeah. son was, was a real very, very good ball player. I think player. a thousand points yeah, scored. I right? remember seeing him play and like, wow, this is pretty cool. Like you wanna, you're want you young, you want to emulate these high school guys. Right. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. So I thought he was, uh, you know, a very good ball player um, back then. Right. And I didn't see any high school basketball games no, so, prior to actually going. I mean, I know when I was a kid, especially if I saw my father play down at the Veterans Center, when I would see somebody with a good outside shot like Billy Rado or I'd see Jeff oh, Tony. Billy Rado. You know, yourself, Greg. You know, I mean, you kind of want to be those guys when you get older. You want to be able to be at that place. I mean, did, when you would go see your father play at those men's leagues, were there anybody that you really liked watching? Not that I remember. Not that stood out as far as a particular person. Right. But uh, I just enjoyed watching and learning. Right. Being a student of the game. Now, um, you, you mentioned fifth grade you started playing. I'm sure you were playing at that point. Now, were you two on all-star teams and things like that as time went on? When I was in fourth grade, I made the eighth grade basketball team for St. Michael's, and I thought that was a big deal. Wow. So, and um, now who was coaching then? Uh, was Jack, I think Jack Walsh just left then. Right. I think maybe uh, uh, Russ McGill's father, right. Mr. McGill, was coaching. Now, were you at Seymour yet, or were you still in Ansonia at that point? I or was actually. Oxford, actually. But, I mean, were you at? Well, it was a transition because, uh, you know, in fifth grade I was at Ansonia, and then sixth grade, I think, Partway through the year, I moved to Oxford, but I stayed right. in the Ansonia school system. So fifth and sixth grade, I went to Assumption School in Ansonia, and kind of a funny little uh, <laughs> thing between uh, <laughs> between Ken and that. I. We <laughs> actually played against each other uh, in the sixth grade. So let me give you a little backdrop. Our sixth grade team, we had some good athletes: Andy Polkadowski, right. Steve Hillwood, Johnny Stockmull. Um, so we thought we were pretty good. Like, okay, we're good. <laughs> so I remember playing these guys, and I remember just like six foot blonde headed kids, just great athletes. Who would you have? Dreer, Nixon, who else you have? Joe Shea. Oh, just, right. and I'm like, we talked about this about a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> and um, this fool sends me the press clippings, the box score. <laughs> yes, I still have it. I said, listen, I thought I you lost by 20. It. He goes, no, you lost by <laughs> 27 or something like that. And he texted it to me. But I, you know, I thought we were good. But they just had five or six just tremendous tall right. athletic athletes. I'm one of these blonde kids. I'm like, wow. I thought I was good. And I'm like, <laughs> their depth was pretty good. Oh. So we joke about that. Oh, all the time. yeah. My first introduction to them. That's right. right. I didn't yeah. like them at all. <laughs> <laughs> now, would you two, would that be the last time you two would have any interaction until you went to Derby High? Mm-hmm. So yeah. pretty much that one game was your only meet in that up to that point. Right. Yeah. Now, Greg, um, you grew up as you got older, to be good friends with Jim Pucci. You two obviously were in the same class as Ken. I mean, when did you first meet him? I mean, you obviously probably knew his brother, Bill, but did you know Jim right away or not till high school? Well, we knew each other uh, from Little League Baseball because I played, you know, my entire four years (coughs) in the Ansonia Little League system. Right. But he was on the other side of town. You know, he was in the, uh, you know, east side and I was on the west side or vice versa I can't exactly right. remember but um so we never really played against each other but we knew about each other because right. you know you just you know you know who's playing well on the right. other side of town and all that sort of stuff and you know he came from Ansonia to Derby High School and I came from Oxford to Derby High School so we sort of uh you know since we were out of towner so to speak we became like immediate best friends right freshman year yeah 
Right. So now, Ken, you never did go to Derby Public School, correct? You went to St. Mary's, St. Michael's most of the time? It was St. Michael's. We didn't I, like St. Mary's back then. We didn't <laughs> merge yet. So Now, were, were you able to, were, were any of your classmates at that point at the school with you, like um, any athletes that stand out at that time? Um, a lot of the kids, I said the Stockmills, the Hills, right. they went to Seymour, Bobby Zielinski went to Seymour, Billy Gagnon. Right. I, I guess the one key person there was Andy Polkadowski. Right. He and I have been friends since uh, a kindergarten. Right. Now, did you have any desire to go to the Derby Upper School in eighth grade, or did your parents just want you to stay? Well, I was young. I said, I'm a December birthday. So right. I remember eighth grade, and I thought I was pretty decent in basketball, so I was going to go to a Derby Middle School and repeat my eighth grade year. Right. Uh, you know, to get bigger, stronger, and athletic reasons. And my grades were very good. And I'll never forget Mr. Dorenzo, who was the AD or superintendent. Superintendent, right. Uh, he said, listen, I think you're going to be bored in eighth grade year. So my parents said, okay, let's, let's go to be a freshman. Right. So I moved up and, uh, you know, things happen for a reason. I'm very happy. I met Greg, lifelong friends, best friends. So, right. um, but I always question back, like, wow, if I did that one more year, because one more year of high school, physical and mental maturity, I, I think it just means so much. Right. You can't teach that. You can't coach that. Now, how did you like your game at that point at eighth grade? Did, obviously, you needed work because, you know, you only get better as time goes on. But did you think you were getting better and better each year in your development? I put the time and effort in. I, I thought I was getting, you know. And there better. were no feeder programs back then either like yeah. there are today. No, there was no, no AAU. Like that. So, I mean, yeah. basically you played on a school team and you played Biddy. And but, you know what, as Greg said, you know, whatever season it was, you know, on Derby Avenue, I uh, used to go to Franklin School, play basketball. It was football right. season. We played touch football, you know, two-hand tag or, you know, baseball, stickball, whatever it may be. So we had always a bunch of kids that we'd play. So it's not right. like nowadays as far as how organized and structured AAU, things like that. We just, you, you make do with what you have. Right, which is a good segue into my next question. I'll start with you. Do you think it's good for a kid to concentrate on one sport year-round? You look at football now, it's like 12 months a year you know, baseball, softball, the same thing, and now basketball as well, where one kid is just concentrating more on one sport instead of playing multiple sports. Do you think that's good for a kid, or do you think they should play other sports? Well, I mean, I see pros and cons to both, to be honest with you, Mike. But, I mean, I think other sports help you in the sport that's the off-season as well, too. Right. You know, just from a conditioning program um, aspect, and also, you know, you're using different um, – Different muscles and just right. different, you know, different things in other sports that you would be using in, say, you know, comparing basketball to football or football to baseball. So, right. you know, I think it helps all, all, all the way around if you're playing uh, two or three different sports. Right. Because now, Ken, if I'm not mistaken, your son's played multiple sports, correct? My eldest, Kyle, um, he played basketball, baseball, and football right. in, in high school. And my youngest, he saw what my eldest went through, like football it's 12 months a year right it's very you know dedicated he just played basketball and baseball right he played pop warner football he saw what his brother went through i mean it was great he loved it um, right but it was difficult and he wanted to concentrate really on basketball that was his sport right and now they're both playing baseball assumption college but going back to your point you know talk to a lot of when they were getting recruited the coaches look for tr uh, three sport or two sport athletes is that right that, that was a big thing for right. these guys because you know being a pitcher pitching 11 months a year as far as the arm Right. It's just it's a lot of wear and tear, and you want to be well rounded uh, in other sports. So I'm a big advocate of multiple sports. You just don't see that nowadays. Right. So I think it's tough. Right. But my son's turned out well, so more power to him. Right. So Greg, talk to me about how the decision is made that you're going to go to Derby High. I mean, it's we're talking 40 years ago. I don't expect you to remember it verbatim, but. How did your dad and mother come to you? Did they talk to you about it? Did you talk to your father about it first? How did it come about? Yeah, I mean, we had a conversation. It was, I mean, it wasn't a long conversation, to be honest with you. It was just, <laughs> right. no, you know, my, me and my father went to Derby High School. I think he sort of wanted <coughs> me to go to Derby High School because right. he went there. And, um, and quite honestly, I have a brother that was a year behind me, and he was definitely going to Seymour High School. And him and I, at that time, as you know, brothers that are 10, 10 and a half months in age, we didn't really get along that well. So we kind of figured it might be best if we were at different schools anyway. Right. So that's sort of how that decision was made. There was no real long conversations about it, quite right. honestly. And, and plus knowing John Spock, his father, once he makes a decision, yes. yeah, it's a short conversation. Yeah. yeah. Do you think if, you, if Oxford had a high school at the time, you would have went to Oxford High? 
if you had to look back on it. I mean, I probably would have. Right. Yeah. So you weren't concerned about leaving friends behind, right? You were just like, you know, no. this is where I'm going to go to school. Yeah. Right. And I know um, freshman year began and you played football, obviously. But um, if I'm not mistaken, you both freshman year played for Coach Jack Walsh, correct? Yes. On the freshman yes, basketball yes, team. Yes. Right. And um, another player, he was the other tri-captain, which uh, I'm going to get to is Rich Mester. Mm -hmm. um, did you guys know him at all till high school or not really? Rick and I competed against each other at St. Michael's, and he was St. Mary's. So really? we didn't like each other. Wow. So, so did, yeah. <laughs> you had to get over that part, right? Oh, yeah. That was a big thing back then. Right. So talk to me about freshman basketball because now – you're, it's a more organized thing. I mean, you played for school teams and stuff like that, but now you're playing. Talk to me about Coach Walsh because he would go on to have a very good run at Shelton High School. I think he was there 12 years and won three Hoosie titles. Talk to me about Coach Walsh and what he was. I, I, we, I, we were fortunate to have him as far as a freshman coach. Yeah. He was a great coach. Right. He knew the X's and O's. He knows how to handle you know multiple personalities. Uh, it's a shame because I think the following year, the head coaching job was open for, for Shelton, Derby High School. Right. No, for Derby High School basketball. Derby High. Right. And he didn't get it. And he went to Shelton as the head coach and a tremendous run he had there. But yeah. we were lucky and fortunate to have him for a freshman coach at Derby. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, you guys had a successful year that year. I think he went eight and six as freshman. Um, just talk about the freshman year. You know, one thing, too, that I've always said hurts Derby in the past is you guys are taller than everybody as freshmen. And then... For some reason, Derby stops growing, and those kids <laughs> that were freshmen continue to grow, and that always seems to hurt Derby. But um, to have a winning season in Derby basketball is pretty amazing. So what was that freshman team like for you guys? We were, we were pretty good. Yeah, we were. We, were a pretty we beat in Sonia, team. remember? And like, wow, yeah. we got something. I remember we beat in Sonia. It's like, wow, you know, you give us a couple more years, another year or two, it's like we're going to be something pretty decent. But, uh, yeah, we had a lot of good athletes. And I'm sure Coach Walsh has oh, a lot to do with tremendous. the success that we and had now as they, well. Too. Coach yeah. Walsh having an assistant on that team as well, helping you guys. I mean, was Ken Pereira there? No. No. no, I think it was just, coach. just coach. Right. He put a lot of time and effort into us. Yeah. Right. And I mean, he, you know, he coached under some great guys. He coached under Tanner for a little bit. He coached under um, Rich Marazzi. Oh. So you know, I mean, he's had people that taught him, and I mean, he's just a great teacher himself. I used to go to Arrowhead Basketball Clinic. Uh, probably fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, and C Coach Morazzi always drove me every single day to camp. Myself and Glenn Gradadoria. What a gr tremendous coach, Emmett O'Brien. What a great guy. Yeah, he really is. And I mean, you see what he does with, oh. you know, the baseball and stuff like that. Yep. It's tremendous. So the freshman year comes to an end. I mean, do you? Obviously, I know the answer for you. You're coming back, but same thing. You're coming back the following season. Oh yeah, it was no doubt. I mean, I, I. Yeah fit in very well at Derby High School. Now, was it harder for you to go from football right into basketball? Did it take you a couple weeks to get <coughs> comfortable? Like, I mean, because now you're going from, you know, running pass patterns and things like that, and now you got to get right into basketball. No, it was great because I was in better shape than all the other guys. So right. it was just fine. I all right, let's hold fit on. Hold fit on in <laughs> just, it, it went from one transition to another just fine. No problem, yeah. Right. And, you know, the thing about that, that freshman team, too, from what Coach Walsh has told me, is he said there were a lot of unselfish guys, which when we get into part two, we'll talk about that as well. But nobody cared about who had the most stats. It was just trying to do whatever you guys could do for the team. One night you might have 15, the next night Ken may, the next night, you know, Mester may. So, I mean, uh, you know, it, you guys weren't worried about stats and things you like know, that. Tommy D'Onofrio, another great athlete. You know, Ed right. Benavides, Joe Sabatini. We had we were just trying to fit in and learn the system and right. be successful high school basketball players. And I think we saw the potential in the in, in the future at an early age freshman year. So we just wanted to do well. We wanted to, you know, back the, you know back then when coaches speak, you, you're quiet. Like you listen. Right. Yeah. Nowadays, you know, some of the lift these kids. So we were just sitting there like, hey, we want to get better. We want to absorb. We want to be a sponge and learn. And I think that was our attitude. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, and Coach Walsh had a lot to do with that. Oh yeah, set I the mean, expectations. Yeah. Right. And um, so freshman year comes to an end. Now, you played baseball, correct? Yes. Freshman year, right. And you just focused on basketball, correct? I, yeah, I stopped playing baseball after my eighth grade year. Right. Now, would you continue to play basketball in the spring, though, any way you could? I mean, were you yeah. at home every day? At home. I remember some summer leagues. I think we played summer leagues or pickup games, whatever it may be. But just continue. 
Right. Just love of the game. And you had a, you know, I didn't see you play, obviously, but I saw you play in that men's league. You had a tremendous jump shot. Were you always a guy that liked to shoot from outside? I mean, was that early on, or did you just develop that as time went on? You know, it's just funny. When I was growing up, we had a two-family house. We lived uh, upstairs from my, my grandparents. So we had my father build a hoop underneath our, our deck, and it was probably three feet wide and, and probably 15 feet long. Right. That's all I did. Let's shoot straight away, elbow in, wave goodbye. So just, right. you know, practice, make perfect. I, re I was out there all the time, like, okay, keep working, keep working, and just kind of developed. Now, was there a certain college team that you liked watching that, you know, you kind of... Well, St. John's I liked. Right, because of like, Mullen, yeah, right. Mullen. And Karnaseka, who was a great coach. Yeah. Did you watch a lot of college basketball? Or? I, I watched during the NCAA tournament. Right. That's kind of when I focused on. Now, were so. you the type of kid that just had trouble watching sports on TV, like playing it much better than sitting down and watching it? No, I enjoyed watching it. I definitely right. enjoyed watching it as well, too. Right. And like I said, the NBA was a better game back yeah. then. Yeah. I mean, I, I think right when you guys were in high school is when Magic and Bird came up. I think Magic was probably a rookie, your sophomore year, somewhere around there. But you had that great Michigan State, Indiana State final. Right. So, I mean, you guys came into high school at a time where College basketball was tremendous, and high school basketball was tremendous as well. Yeah. Right. So now sophomore year comes, and Greg, I, if I'm not mistaken, you got a lot of playing time on the football team that year, correct, as D-back? Yeah, I did, yeah. Right, yeah. and that was a good team, The um, what was it, the 79 team. They had a decent team that year. Decent team. I mean, I don't think we played up to our expectations, but, right. you, know, uh, you know, I think our final record was a, a little disappointing given the talent we had. Right. You know, one of the things, though, you, you have to have good coaching, and you especially in the three sports you played, you were blessed with good coaching. I mean, you know, you had Lou DiFilippo, obviously, but you you worked a lot with Coach Al, Lou. And, yes. I mean, to me, that guy is a genius. He yes. knows <laughs> everything. And as far as basketball goes, you guys were very fortunate, I think, because your sophomore year, you got to have George Tanner as your head coach and Paul Landoffi as yep. your JV coach. Correct. Correct. So let's talk about sophomore year a little bit. Your two young kids, what was that first practice like? Were you nervous? I don't think Greg was because Greg doesn't seem to get nervous, but what about you, Ken? No, I, I was excited. I felt good. I think we came off a great freshman campaign. Like, okay, what can we do? What can we build here? Uh, Landoffi uh, was a great guy, right. funny guy. And they were both um, tough guys too, uh, correct? Tanner was very tough. Landoffi yeah. was a nicer one of the two. Yeah. More funnier. Yeah, Talk absolutely. to me about a George Tanner practice, though. What did it consist of? Because he was – one thing he told me years later, he was very big on – passing the ball correctly if you didn't do it right he continued to make you run talk about tanner a little bit i just think practice makes perfect and execution it's a small little things and repetition to make sure you keep doing it and do it the right way right before you you know go on from there it's a building block approach so i think he was a stickler which was great for the the, the basics and fundamentals i think they get lost right so now you both were fortunate enough on to have on that team Rich's older brother, Chris, who was one of the best derby players ever, ever thousand point scorer. But, you know, I know talking to my father, the place used to be packed when he was playing. Greg, you probably worked with him a lot or you guys were like the same position, correct? Pretty yeah, much. Yeah. Talk about uh, just being around Chris every day in practice, what that was like. Well, I mean, he, I mean, he was just a great player, a great guy. He was a little low key. Very. Right. More on the quiet side. I would say even though we played, you know, the same position, I think our games were, you know, a little bit different and that, um, you know, Chris was, Chris was probably uh, a little more finesse than physical, I would say. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, he was just, uh, I mean, he was a great basketball player. He, right. he worked hard. He got his points. Yeah, different type of players. Chris had a very strong base. Yeah. I mean, um, but you, you compare them, Greg, Greg, Greg was everything, you know. Greg was a great athlete. Better right. athlete than Chris. Right. And no, no disrespect to Chris, who's a great, probably the greatest basketball player I've ever seen at Derby. Right. So. And that team had a very successful year, if I'm not mistaken, 12 and 8, yes. if yep. I remember. Yeah. And State tournament. I mean, yeah. yeah. You know, the funny thing is, too, this was unheard of. I don't think to this day nobody's done this. Coach Tanner took you guys to Europe, correct? Did you get yes, to make the right. trip? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Talk go. about that. Talk about the experience a little bit. That was an amazing once-in-a-lifetime experience. And what, we were 14. 
Yeah, that, I mean, I think if, if we could obviously change one thing, it would have been nice if we did senior our year. senior year as a pro. I mean, we were we were so young. We didn't we didn't really have any. Clue I can't imagine we now. I was talking to my boys about it. Like, oh, I'm sorry about that. Taking a, you know a 14 year old like your son, like okay, go to Belgium right. uh, for 10 days, live with a host family, and did you guys have time. to raise money or anything oh, to go? Oh, did on? a great job raising money. Yeah. I mean, it was a once in a lifetime experience. I mean, we're walking the streets signing autographs. Really, um, it was, they loved Americans. We, I'll never forget. And it's a shame that we were only sophomores. Yeah, we played the Belgium national team, and we played in a dome, uh, and they were chanting USA. I'll really? never forget on the bench for that. Like, wow, this is a rush. And I was jealous that I wasn't playing, but what a rush. Yeah. Now, were you guys able to get into some of those games on that trip? I mean, were you able to get some playing time? Or I got to be honest with you, I don't remember. Maybe a mop up. Just probably you know, you're yeah. watching like i remember out there i'm like oh yeah. my god right. did the jvs fans. get to play in that or just the varsity like did they allow a jv game well we dressed varsity greg and i right so um i don't think they had a j no i don't think they dressed jv did they no just varsity team. yeah right yeah. but it was it was a and i mean never experience. mind the basketball itself the, just being out there had the it like culture I mean, going yeah, to, how long like, did you guys go for 10 days right? 10 days, yeah. 10 days yeah. right yeah i always talked to joe mazanti and he was your statistician and he, he didn't get he? to make the trip because he had got an infection mm -hmm. in his ear, and he always regrets that. You know, Tanner had some funny stories about that trip. You know, he got into a little altercation with a coach. He said, you know, nothing major, but he felt like the guy ran up the score. So he always talks about that when I, you know, talk to him. But, I mean, I, I just can't imagine that. I've mm -hmm. never seen any derby team ever go to Europe for anything. I mean, that just yeah. had to be. Did you want to even come home? <laughs> um we, I wanted. To, I mean, you know, now, how did you like keep home. up with your studies and stuff? Because you're talking ten days. I mean, the teachers were supportive I, with I, that. I think they were very supportive. I don't think we did much study. No, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so either. I don't to remember be doing that. You. Right. I remember waking up the first night because you know the jet lag, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, this whole family just staring, looking at me. I'm like, wow, this is quite an experience. I'm in, I'm in Europe. I'm in Belgium right now. Has I know. It. Yeah. Um, but it, it was, as I said once again, it was a great time. Right. We made the most of it, put it that way. I think everyone did. We went on tours and things like that. And, and the plane ride home was quite interesting, right, Greg? Oh, yeah, that was too. But, I mean, it was that really one of the nicest parts about it is, like Ken said, we all stayed with a host family. So we sort of got to see their culture firsthand, yeah. which we obviously wouldn't have had a, a chance to do if we stayed at a hotel. You know what I mean? Right. Now, did any of the parents make the trip, or was it just the kids? Uh I think there were some chaperones. Yeah. Andy Edzimo was one of them. I remember that. Coach yeah. Tanner and Coach Lindoffi. Yeah. And, um, uh, I think Tommy Lainetti. Was Tommy Lainetti with us or no? He might have been. I think he yeah, was. Yeah, he might have been. I think, but I think that but was we a didn't, have didn't get you in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the plane ride over was a fun time for these gentlemen. Right. But um, let me ask you this about that trip, too. Did you two room together, too? I mean, were, was it you? Greg? No, host families. Right. So, so we had room to get, no. Right. Everybody um, stayed with a different family. Yeah. Right. Probably so, a good thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, I think it was good for, for everybody, yeah. to be honest with you. You, you get a little more independent, right. a little more maturity. It's like, yeah. wow, you know, this is the big world now. It's outside Derby, outside the Valley. Right. You know, life does exist. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. so that sophomore team, JV-wise, I think you guys went 9-11 and 11 that year, something like that, almost 10 wins, which is another great year. So you've you go eight and six freshman year. Now you play 20 games, you go nine and 11. Mm -hmm. Talk about your sophomore season just as you as individuals. How did you think you progressed that year? I, I thought much better, I had a much better sophomore campaign than freshman campaign. I think freshman year is like, wow, you know, you know, bigger, stronger athletics. And I met Greg for the first time and hey, we got some good athletes. I, I was happy at our sophomore year. Uh, I think Greg and I, we could have done personally better. I think we both were aspiring for varsity time. Um, right. And I just think, we, we both could have done better to put, put, put ourselves in better positions. I think the opportunities were there. I don't think we capitalized on it or made the most of it. Would you agree? Yeah, I would agree. I think it was also, I mean, again, I'm trying to remember, you know, back however many years ago it was, but I don't think, I think uh, Coach Tanner um, wasn't a huge fan of playing younger guys. I mm -hmm. think that sort of right. came into the equation as well. I think he, he liked playing seniors and juniors. I think. It was a very rare occasion when uh, he ever played sophomores. And, uh, yeah, we were pissed. We wanted to play varsity. Yeah. Right. So talk to me about Coach Tanner in the sense, 
what how do you think he did in helping you guys that year like as far as getting better i mean to me you could say what you want about him but he knows the game yes, in no, and absolutely, out. so yeah. talk about what how do you feel tanner was working with you that year did you feel like you learned a lot that year yeah absolutely i mean again it was you know a big difference because we were practicing with you know when we were freshmen we we're only practicing with freshmen and right now we're sophomores and we're practicing with upperclassmen at that point in mm -hmm. time so mm -hmm. you know it was uh, it was an eye opener playing against uh, you know older, stronger kids, right? Um, which you know we didn't necessarily have the the previous year, and right. uh, you know Coach Tanner, like you said, I mean he knows he knows the game of basketball and uh, fundamentals is what he stresses. So you know I think it helped a lot from that standpoint. Yeah, and we spent a lot of time at Paul and Offie too, as far as yeah, but yeah. Right. we got a, we got a glimpse of varsity basketball. And here we are, two 14-year-olds going against some 18-year-olds. Like, wow, that's quite a big right. difference. Yeah. And Landoffy and Tanner were very young at the time. I think Tanner might have been just 30 at the time. That's it, yeah. Yeah, and I think Landoffy was maybe a little younger. But, you know, at the same time, they both put in a lot of work. I mean, Landoffy, as a JV coach, he worked probably just as hard as Tanner did. And they had good chemistry together, yes. those two. And I think that helped because, like you said, Landoffy was the good cop. So Tanner could be the bad cop. Because, you know, it balanced out. I think it would be harder if you had two coaches constantly on you every day. You know, you kind of need that yeah, to they balance. they played off each other very well. And they said they knew the game. They were tough. But they were fun practices. They were. They were. They definitely were, yeah. Right. And now what kind of – back then, I mean, did you guys do more man-to-man -man or was it more zone defense? What kind of defense did you guys do? I remember doing both, yeah, to be honest with you. I think it depended upon the situation. But – you know, we played probably a zone maybe 60% of the time and man-to-man 40% -man of the time, if I had a guess. Right. Now, let me ask you this, and Ken, you've seen this a lot because you saw your son play. Do you ever get jealous that how the game has changed where these teams run so much more now? It's just, you know, running teams. You're able to score so many more points nowadays. I mean, do you kind of wish you had that back then when you played? I just had this conversation um, with my two sons. Could we rank each other? Who's the best basketball player in the family? We have backyard games, very competitive, very ugly. I know I'm third on the list, but they didn't have the three-point line when we played. Right. So, you know, my youngest son, he was a 1,000-point scorer for Oxford. And I said, different game. We didn't have it back then. But it was more controlled, very pass-oriented. Now it's just like get the ball, get, kick it out, run right. three-pointer. Totally, totally different Do you game. like watching that style of basketball, or does it do you no, kind of I miss? like it. You do? I, I do. And I yeah. think we were well-suited, by the way. Yeah. They ever played that. I mean, I'm very uh -huh. jealous of the way they play now. Because you got to have the horses, you got to have the right mix of people. Um, he was our big guy, and he, he's the most athletic guy in the team, right. so he can get out, run, and dunk, and, and shoot three pointers. So I think that style would complement us very well. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think we would have thrived under under that system. But just different systems and different ages of basketball. So you see the evolution of it. But the big man's lost nowadays. You know, everyone's got to be able to shoot. Yeah. So, you know, Ken. Um, People I talk to when they look back at your playing career is they would always say you played with a chip on your shoulder. Like you never smiled during the games. You were always intense and you were very aggressive. Like, you know, a guy I talked to from Shelton, he said you used to drive him nuts, you know, under the boards because you really give it to him. So you were very aggressive out there as well, which to be successful in basketball, it's not just about shooting and playing D. You have to be aggressive too. Well, I think you have to be well-rounded. You know, I was a skinny kid back then. Right. But I pride myself as far as my defense, you know, boxing out. Um, I just think that's a lost art. Right. You know, those fundamentals things. So just little things I can do. It's like I always wanted to, yeah, I did have a chip. I just wanted to make sure that you want to act like one of the best players out there. But it takes hard work. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to do it. And, you know, Greg and I was our best friends, but we always competed against each other. Right. And Which, we'll get into a story as far as that one time where we changed the lineup and mm. you and I almost tore each other's head off in that scrimmage in, in our practice member session. I actually don't remember that. Oh, I do. Oh, I do. <laughs> We're bringing Greg back to everything. Oh, I do. Yeah. But, Greg, um, you know, as a big guy especially, you have to be aggressive. So, you know, you can't leave anything untested. I mean, you knew that going in, though, that, like, you couldn't just be a scorer. You had to do the other things. I mean, did you like playing defense a lot? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it was part of the game. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're playing in the Housatonic League, uh, you know, with, against some very good competition and against some pretty big guys as well, too. You right. You know, I mean, you know, people that had four or five, 
six inches on me. So, you know, you had to, uh, you had to be physical. That was for sure. And that's the thing people don't understand. It, it, it goes with the MVL too. In football, the MVL always favored Ansonia. Mm -hmm. In football, back when Greg played, a lot of times the Hoosie always favored Derby. But in basketball, it never favored either school. I mean, you're talk Kennedy may have been terrible in basketball, but they or football, but they were pretty good in basketball. As was Wilby, Crosby, all these teams. Same thing in basketball. Maybe East Haven wasn't great in football, but they were tough to beat in basketball. As was Brantford, Cheshire, all these teams. So you know. It's much harder to win in basketball, as you guys both know, than it is football, which you wouldn't think that's the case, but it really is. Oh, absolutely. I mean, again, you know, we're going back many years, but we were probably the only class S school in the Housatonic League. Right. I can't think of another no, I don't school think in the Housatonic so, no. League that was a class S school. And the funny thing is, we'll get into it when we talk about the tournament. You guys didn't even play in the class S tournament your senior year, which we'll get into. Yeah, that still irks me. But, um, Ken, let me ask you this. So sophomore year comes to an end. Your goal junior year is to be on the court, correct? If yes. you're not starting, I mean, maybe not starting, but you want to be in the game. I mean, if you're not doing that, then to, in your mind, it's a failure, correct? Correct. To right. start. So yes. what did you do? Did you go to any, back then camps were different, but did you go to any camps after that I year? Don't think, I, I don't think they were very prevalent back then. Right. Um, no, just worked on my game individually. I remember I had the keys to uh, St. Michael's. I used to help Charlie Stockmill coach there. So Rick Messer, it's a very small gym. Right. And the out of bounds is a, you know, two feet and a brick wall around the whole uh, building. But uh, Rick and I used to go there uh, and just play one-on-one -on -one full court like every weekend. Right. So I used to play a lot with Rick back then as far as uh, working on our basketball game. Right. Now, Greg, you had baseball, and obviously you're not going to play – basketball when you got baseball season going on but were you able to find some time to get basketball in in the off season you know as much as you could like did you have a hoop at your house or? no, I, no. I, I didn't no and and to be honest with you no not really because it was just baseball you know it was just yeah. you know going from one sport to the other and you were focused on whatever season it was at that time right yeah and coach Tanner decides to step down I think he had to go back to school for something let me ask you before we get into who would replace him were you both disappointed that he was leaving because I believe coach Landoffy left with him yes, correct he did, yeah. were you disappointed Ken you know I think from our freshman year to our sophomore year and I think he knew us we knew him we were comfortable confident and yeah I was looking forward to junior year like okay we got something here we, we know the coaches they know us they know our capabilities so, yeah, I expected, when we were going to be young our junior year, but I thought, like, you know what, a two-year plan in place, I thought senior year, double-digit wins. I'm like, okay, same system, same players, no everybody, the comfort level. Right. Um, I was very upset that he left. Right. I, he, he had to, but from a personal perspective and, and, and a team perspective, I'm like, damn. Were you hoping Landoffy would take his place? Yeah. Or, yeah, and Landoffy just left, which... You know, told you he really didn't want to be a head coach, and if it wasn't going to be Coach Stanner, he wasn't going to stick around. Mm -hmm. How disappointed were you, Greg? I, you when? know, I echo Ken's thoughts. I was, I was very disappointed, and I remember being very surprised too. Yeah. Right? I yeah, mean, I don't I think a lot it, of people I didn't see it coming right. at all. You know, right? So, you go into junior year, and Dave Morgan takes over. Now, I, I think he was from New Haven. He was, he was not from the Valley. I know not that. At all. Right. Um, I, I heard so many stories about Coach Morgan. I always heard you either liked him or you didn't. Ken, what was your first impression of Coach Morgan? Um, I think he came from a, a big school in his system and his interpersonal skills. Like, wow, like this is Derby and this is what we got. If we have like five or six athletes, we're very fortunate. Um, my first impression was like, I don't think this guy gets it. Like this, he's got to apply himself to Derby and what we have and how we do things. Now, did he meet with you guys in the off season, or did he wait? No, till? I think we played in the Golf Street League in in uh, New Haven, very good competitive league. He never coached us; he just watched. Right. And, and I think from that, and uh, yeah, you played in that, right? Was yes, that, I remember that the East Haven guy or the Amity Kid. The Amity Kid, yes. <laughs> funny story. Uh, yeah. Real funny. Well, <laughs> no, that's so funny. But this kid had to be what six six. Six, and he just, six seven, I think it was six seven. Yeah. So he. Greg was competing, battling against him, and it was a good game. And the kid undercut, undercut Greg, and he fell flat on his oh, face. Man, 
and he broke both his teeth in front. So I picked his teeth up, and he and I went yeah. to the, the doc, emergency room. But I'm like, oh, Craig, I'll get your teeth and let's go. But boom, I'll never forget yeah. that. But we played, we played in that league. He hooked up with that league, and uh, it was good, very competitive. Wow. Right. Yeah. So and um, it probably helped a lot, correct? I mean, like getting ready for the season and stuff like that. Yeah, we loved it. There's great talent there. It's like, okay, we have a lot of work to do. Like we thought we were pretty decent, but seeing these other people play, it's like we have a lot of work to do, and we have a long way to go. Right. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent. I believe when Coach Morgan took over, John Oko became the junior varsity coach. Correct. Was he freshman or junior JV? He might have been a freshman. Maybe he was a freshman. Was it Coach? Uh, coach Dick. Right. Yes, Mike Dick. That's Mike right. Dick. Mike right. Dick. Right. Yes. That's a very good, Ken. Yeah. So it's a good. whole new coaching staff, you know. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, never mind Coach Morgan. You had to adjust him. But how about the other two guys? At least Oko was a derby guy. I mean, he had. He got it. He was very quiet. Right. Um, when he spoke, you heard him loud. Uh, coach Dick. I, I like Coach Dick. He was, he was a funny guy. I think he got us. Yeah. Uh, we had some... We were outgoing, personable. Yeah. He got our yeah. humor. I don't yeah. think Morgan ever got our humor. Right. Um, but um, I think Coach Dick was more like Coach Landoffy. Right. Yes. You know? Yeah. You know, not being the head guy, yes. but like, hey, listen, I got to be somewhere between. Like, I, I hear what you're saying, but I got to conform to the head coach. Right. I, I really like Coach Dick a lot. Yeah. I thought he knew the game very well. So did Morgan. But I think his approach to applying what he knew to actually right. getting on his players, I think that's where we differed. Now, Greg, did you have trouble adjusting to Coach Morgan? You seem like the type of guy that just loves playing, so yeah, it doesn't matter who's no, it the didn't head really coach. Matter. Um, right. I, I, you know, I liked Coach Morgan a lot. I loved his intensity. Right. I, I mean, used to hear he would bite on the towel and stuff. Oh, I mean, my yes, God. Yes, you know, yes, yes. And I, you know, I just heard, like, a lot of times they would catch him talking to himself. They didn't exactly know what he was saying. But what I've always heard about him is you either really liked him or you didn't get him, you know. But uh, how did you think he did as far as like keeping the flow going of the team? I thought he did. I, I thought he did a pretty good job. I mean, listen, obviously, he's coming from you know a large school at, with, and he was on championship teams yes. with that school. Yeah. You know, he had won some championships yes, as an assistant. So I mean, this was something new. He's coming to a program that, like I said, has always been known to just try to keep their head above water, and that's not yeah. always easy. So. No, it's not always easy with the enrollment that we had, of course. And I think that was probably a little bit of culture shock to uh, to Coach Morgan, to be quite honest with you, Very much. when right. he actually saw what the talent pool that he had to, uh, <laughs> to, to coach. Yeah. Now, was he crazy in practice, or was he mild? I mean, what would you say, Ken? Uh, intense is an understatement. I'll never forget the conditioning. So yeah, he was did. definitely, I mean, he and was. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, he definitely. I mean, kids were throwing up. Really? Yeah. And I'm Were like, you one of them? Or? Nope. No. I was not one of How them. How about you? No. <laughs> no. But, but I'm just saying, like, wow, like, we didn't touch a basketball. Just really? conditioning, conditioning, yeah. conditioning. Right. And it's like, okay, you know, we were going to touch a ball here or, you know, get into it or talk about philosophy and, you know, expectations. I was just waiting for that. Right. I, I'm a stickler for details. Like, let's have a plan and right. execute on that plan. He and I, junior year, we, we, we butted heads a lot. Right, but you would you did play a lot junior year, oh, yeah. and as did Greg. Talk about junior year. It was a three and seventeen season, um, tough year. But you guys knew that going. Is that in. what it was? Three and seventeen. Three and seventeen. Yes. But uh, talk about that team a little bit. I mean, you guys were on the court all year. That's the important thing. But let me ask you, how hard is it when you know you're playing your best and you're still going to go out there and lose? I mean, it can't be fun. It sucks because you know you're outmanned. Right, and we're young, and I always tell them I coach a lot in basketball in Oxford, and you can always prepare them as best you can uh, as far as the game, but the actual play, it, the experience, the pace of the game, um, the speed of the game, you can't coach that until you actually go through it. And I think that's what we went through our junior year. Like, wow, um, you know, we had a score, and I, I don't think we were used to that setting quite yet. Right. And I remember, like, wow, I thought we were better than we should have been. It was a transition year for everyone coaching and players. And I think we expected, like, okay, we've had success, um, but I don't think we expected to be that, that dismal of a season. I think we had better talent. I think we had some nice role players, Mike Pishkinary, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there were only two seniors on that team. Right, you which know. is not easy. It's no, hard to it's, win when it's you don't. Definitely not Because, you know, they don't have the experience, the rest of the team. You guys are first-year varsity players, so you're still learning, you know, how to play a varsity-type game. 
I mean, how would you say, though, as an individual, how did you feel your season went that year? Because you did have a decent season. I think you scored over 300 points that year, so that's I mean, pretty yeah. impressive. I mean, I had, I mean, from a personal standpoint, yeah, I had, I had a very good year. Right. But at the end of the day, you know, somebody had a, I mean, somebody had a score. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but it, again, it's really tough when you're, and you know the funny thing about 17. the funny thing about that three and seventeen team though, is you guys were in a lot of close games. It always seemed to die in the fourth quarter, which Derby basketball over the years that's always kind of been their problem. They could hang for a half, they could hang till the fourth quarter, but it seems like they just die in the fourth quarter. Something just goes wrong. Why do you think that is, Ken? What do you think the big problem is? Easy depth. Absolutely. Yeah. There's no ifs ands and outs about. It. We're relying on two or three guys to score and carry the team. And teams adjust. And, and listen, yeah. and we never came out. No. You know, um, so, you know. I mean, no matter what great shape we were in, at the exactly. end of the you day, get if you're playing six people, maybe seven, and the other team is playing nine and ten, yeah, it's right. going to be difficult to keep up with them in the fourth quarter. Because even your junior year, you played Shelton tough. I mean, again, you guys didn't necessarily, there were a couple games you got beat yeah. pretty bad, but there were games you guys were right in. I mean, and Ken, I mean, you were counted on a lot, which is kind of unfair for a guy who's really not, you know, considered a big guy. You were counted on a lot to get rebounds for that team, and that's not easy when you're like five foot ten trying to, you know, be counted on that stuff. Was it difficult? Or I was what six two, about one hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah. But uh, you know, he needed help. You don't want to leave a teammate. You know, that, right. that was, you do what you have to do to win. I mean, did you enjoy it? I mean, you both said you never came out. I mean, I'm sure you were tired, but at the same time, when you're sitting on that bench, it's not easy to be on that bench. You want to be back in there. So We never wanted to come out. Yeah, I, right. I think if he took us out, we were pissed, and they knew it, correct? Yeah. Oh, just, yeah. It was not an option. Like, like, you know, nowadays it's like, no, we just expected to play, and we right. wanted to play, and that was it. Let so. me ask you this. One of the things, too, I feel hurt Derby not just in basketball, but every sport, especially when you guys were playing, is there was so much talent that wasn't playing basketball, like they were playing CYO. Mm -hmm. I look at guys like the Tony brothers. They could have really helped Derby in basketball. They could have really helped Derby in football had they played. They just didn't want to play basketball. I mean, do you think that hurt when some of these kids just didn't play? You know, I had the pleasure of playing baseball with Jeff and John Tony. Uh, John was a very good athlete, but yeah. Jeff... Was phenomenal, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think he knew how good he was. Right. Um, and he got bigger and stronger. Uh, he definitely would have helped. But, you know, it's, it's choices you make. Um, and, and you go to the people you have there, and that's your team, that's your brotherhood. Right. You know, woulda, coulda, shoulda, yeah, I wish we had, you know, but they weren't on the same page of us, same vision. Uh, I, good friends of mine, but this is my team, this is my brothers, and this is who we go to war with. Right. Battle with, I should say. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I never understood kids as, you know, had the ability and didn't want to play at a high school level because you only get one chance. You know, and there's got to be a ton of regrets looking back now. Right. Oh yeah, definitely. So I, I mean, I would encourage anybody, you know, to play high school sports. And that's why I don't understand the window of opportunity to play varsity, any varsity sport, is so small. Like, why wouldn't you? If you have the opportunity and the talent, I think it's a shame that you know, give it a try and go out for it and be part of something bigger than yourself. Right. I just think yeah, it's a real, I see that a lot nowadays. It's like I'm gonna focus on one sport or I don't like the coach or this and everything. You know what? You do it for yourself because when you graduate, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda, or I actually did it and right. I applied myself. Yeah. Right. So. You know, Greg, junior year, I think, as far as the three teams you played on that year was tough in general. The football team, was five and five that's not your typical derby football team and i don't think the baseball team did any better that year would they go five and 15 maybe so probably something like that right yeah. so it was a rough year for sports for you as far as like team went but you had a good junior year in football i mean you had a tremendous season that year um big game against shelton and then i mean you know baseball you had a good year as well and of course basketball so i mean does it does it still, I mean, is it still upsetting when the team's not winning, but you know you're at least doing good? Or, Well, yeah, of course it's upsetting right. when the team's not doing well. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, you just try to, to, to play your best and do what you can. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's, that's all you can do. Right. But yeah, it's, I mean, of course, when you have, you know, you go from football to basketball to baseball and, you know, neither you know none of the three teams have much success it's frustrating yeah right absolutely now 
I, I'm pretty sure I know this answer, but back when you played, do you think Derby should have played in a different league, one where they could be more competitive, or would you not wanted that? Would you've wanted to stay in the Hoosie? I, I never thought about that. Uh, I think you get better playing against better teams. Right. Um, the only thing that you know I talked about earlier that really upset me was the 65% rule. That right. if you play 65% of your schedule against large, we were a class at school, so we're playing double L, double L schools. Right. Uh, because of that, we got bumped up to class M. And it's like, what a world of difference. I mean, let's play schools like us with a certain talent pool. And, and I think we would have done extremely well, junior and senior. Year. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but we years. never got that opportunity. And they, they abolish that no longer. But I, I think it was, a, especially our senior year, someday I'll get over that. But we'll <laughs> talk later about that in the next yeah. segment. Right. Um, senior year comes. I don't care what sport it is. When you get the honor of being elected captain, it has to be a great feeling. So, Ken, I'll start with you. What was the feeling like when Coach Morgan told you you were elected tri-captain? Uh, it, it was great. I, I think you lead by example. I, I think that summer going into it, um, I think everyone knew their role. I think we had a very good team. So uh, uh, I guess we expected it. Yeah. But, but right. I think we've earned it. I think not expected I think we earned it, put it that way. Would you agree yeah, with that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. So... Um, it was it was an honor, um, but we had a job to do. Right. So. Uh, and Greg, what about you? I mean, I always felt like you should have been captain in football. That's just my personal opinion. But talk about basketball. What was the feeling like when Coach Morgan told yeah, you? Yeah, it was great. I mean, you know, like Ken said, I think that um, you know, coming off of our junior season and leading by example with the other people that were on the team, uh, and helping as best we could. I think that we sort of expected that we yeah. would be captain come our senior season but um you know i, I was happy but I, I didn't give it a, a ton of thought yeah. i just was anxious right. to start the you're still season. a kid too exactly you know you're, yeah. those things become more appreciative as you get older right yes yeah. well guys we're just getting started because now we've set the stage for the magical season and we will discuss that in part two i want to thank you both for coming on part one and i'll see you on part two thank you mike thanks mike and that was greg spock and ken chadoba for hometown heroes i'm mike kenichi saying good night everyone